We're going to start with the next chapter that is the rat trap from your textbook, Flamingo. This uh, story, in the beginning only, the writer says, you know, like it reads like a fairy tale. And we have read many fairy tales. What do you think is common among all the fairy tales that you have read? Yes? What is there about fairy tales? So it is not necessarily, yeah, I mean, like, of course, you have your princes and princesses, and you have this element of magic and all, right? And yes, one very common thing is that they have a happy ending. Yeah, correct. Absolutely. And here it is, this story is also like that. And when we read fairy tales, what is there? Yeah, like uh, there's uh, something wrong happening and uh, there, the, whether it's the prince's kindness or the princess's kindness, so, right? So there's a character who brings about a change and his goodness and kindness brings about a change in another character, right? This is also what this story is about. The rat trap, it's like a fairy tale because yes, it talks about that kindness and goodness can bring about a change in anyone, right? And we can change people here, we can change their behavior with our kindness. This chapter, the rat trap. Yes, what is a rat trap? What do we keep a rat trap for? For catching rats, yes. And uh, what makes the rat uh, enter that trap? What makes the rat enter, get caught? So you put something inside the trap? Yes. What do you keep inside? Food. Yeah, you put food there and to catch the rat. And uh, the poor thing comes over there in search of food and is caught over there. Does not know that, see, you got it's landed itself in a terrible situation, right? Now here in this chapter, the world has been compared to a rat trap. The peddler, we'll discuss about the characters here, but before that, I just want you to get an idea. Here he has used the metaphor of rat trap for the world. If we look at the rat trap here, yes, there's a bait over there. What do we call the food that we have kept for the rat to come? We call it bait. What is it? Bait, okay. Yes, B-A-I-T, like bait. You go fishing also. So you put uh, something there at the end of the hook. So the fish, they come and get caught. Yes, so they see that food and they get stuck on the hook. So similarly in the trap also, what is there as bait? Food is there as bait. Now the rat trap has been compared with the world also. The world has been, you know, like, yes, compared or it, the comparison is there. It is like a rat trap or it is a rat trap. How is the world a rat trap? How is the world a rat trap? We are stuck in this rat trap. We all are. So what is it that makes this world a rat trap? Yes? What is there that uh, makes us get stuck and it's very difficult to come out? All the worldly pleasures, the goods, the materials, listic things that we are so connected with, right? So once we are there in this world, we automatically get attracted to all these and it's so difficult to come out of that. Yes, so yes, the world is also a rat trap. Okay, now here in this story, there is this poor person, there is a tram, a peddler, right? So in the names, there are all the words which used to describe these homeless people, don't have a regular source of income, don't have a home. So what did this peddler do? What did this person do? He made rat traps for a living. And he was quite shabby in his appearance did not have a home to live, right? And he went from place to place begging for uh, food and, uh, you know, like material and money. And then he would make these rat traps. 
and a very interesting thought came to his mind that see he is making rat traps but he says that who are the real people who are stuck in this rat trap that is the people of this world who are caught in the materialistic pleasures they are the ones who are stuck in the rat trap right so he feels very happy see i don't have any money i don't have any belongings so i i don't have uh, any problem so i am not in the rat trap so he feels very happy when this thought comes to his mind but a little things happen you know like here it is but even if it is at times a person who does not have anything at all all of a sudden he sees money and goods and things like that he is tempted and one little mistake we commit it makes us fall in the trap and it becomes very difficult to come out so what did the peddler do he made these rat traps he compared the world with the rat trap he is very happy with that idea with that thought but one thing happens with him that makes him fall into the rat trap right so that is what we are going to find out and how do things resolve themselves at the end how does everything come happy and nice and how does this story turn out to be like a fairy tale okay so these are the things that we are going to discuss and once again it is a very interesting story you're going to like reading it definitely you are going to like that yes i'll make sure you like it so the rat trap and uh, yes about what i have discussed with you all yeah so selma legloff she is a very popular swedish writer and uh, they have been translated into many languages and a universal theme runs through all of them essential goodness in a human being can be awakened through understanding and love this story is set amidst the mines of sweden rich in iron ore which figure large in the history and legends of that country so naturally when we talk about stories when you talk about folk tales the culture the geography the occupation the thoughts of the people are depicted so we're talking about sweden here and uh, naturally as we read along we'll be discussing so the iron ore mining it's a very large uh, you know occupation over there right so mining there it is so it is going to feature in this story also so these are the terms and expressions which we are going to discuss as we read the chapter so once upon a time see the starting is also like a fairy tale once upon a time there was a man who went around selling small rat traps of wire he made them himself at odd moments from the material he got by begging in the stores or at the big farms but even so the business was not especially profitable so he had to resort to both begging and petty thievery to keep body and soul together even so his clothes were in rags his cheeks were sunken and hunger gleamed in him so there was a man he went around selling small rat traps he made them himself and where did he get the material from begging in the stores and in the big farms but even though the rat traps that he made they were not enough for him right to keep him alive so what did he do he used to beg also and he used to commit these small crimes petty thievery to keep body and soul together to keep himself alive even so his clothes were in rags his cheeks were sunken he is not very really healthy clothes rags torn tattered cheeks sunken because of hunger and hunger gleamed in his eyes so when you look at rats you know so they'll be they constantly sniffing around and looking around here and their eyes having that you know shine there what that hunger there in their eyes searching for something so this man also he was making rat traps and uh, yes so he also resorted to stealing at times and begging at times because he had to keep himself alive and there was a hunger in his eyes because yes he he never got enough to eat he didn't have enough money to keep himself properly fed no one can imagine how sad and monotonous life can appear to such a vagabond who plods along the road left to his own meditation 
vagabond person who does not have a permanent home right so he moves from one place to another he does not have a regular source of income he does not have a regular home and he moves from one place to another who plods along the road plodding he's not in a hurry to go anywhere so he's walking very slowly without any aim or without any direction right because he does not have any fixed destination so when we walk on the road like if yeah you know i have to go to the shop and i have to buy something and then i have to come back home you know where i have to go right so you are going to work walk with these very determined steps but he is there walking with that tiredness with that lack of you know like of course purpose left to his own meditations so he was alone all the time and he had a lot of thoughts but one day this man had fallen into a line of thought which really seemed to him entertaining he had naturally been thinking of his rat traps when suddenly he was struck by the idea that the whole world about him the whole world with its lands and seas its cities and villages was nothing but a big rat trap it had never existed for any other purpose than to set baits for people it offered riches and joys shelter and food heat and clothing exactly as a rat trap offered cheese and pork and as soon as anyone let himself be tempted to touch the bait it closed in on him and then everything came to an end right so here it is uh, yes sir. what a uh, like this thought he came to him the peddler or the vagabond or the rat trap uh, you know the peddler here where as he walk from place to place moving from one place to another begging for material asking for material and sometimes stealing also things to keep himself alive and uh, so he, a thought came to his mind and he says see i am making these rat traps but what is this world this world is a big rat trap and who are the rats over here in this world we are the rats what have we we been attracted by what have we got uh, you know like uh, tempted by all the luxuries the riches the joys all the things that are there right so we have been tempted by them and caught by them and now what has happened we are stuck in this rat trap and even if we want to come out we can't why because we have so many attachments we have so many things that we like in this world right so whether it is materialistic goods whether it is family friends whatever it is there and yes so he's saying everything over here in this world is the bait right and people they get stuck in this trap exactly as the rat trap offered cheese and pork so people they keep cheese here and pork food right anything there inside the rat trap so as to tempt the rat to come inside it closed in on him and then everything came to an end what came to an end for the rat life is over he's caught over there right so here like twice for us also so here what did the peddler compare the world with the rat trap right so he ha has used this metaphor for the world and he's saying that the world has a lot of riches it has so many things here and we are all stuck over here we are caught over here and uh, because we all have our attractions we all have our attachments and so we are like these rats stuck over here permanently the world had of course never been very kind to him so it gave him unwanted joy to think ill of it in this way it became a cherished pastime of his during many dreary plodings to think of people he knew who had let themselves be caught in the dangerous snare snare is a trap and of others were still circling around the bait so he is they very happy you know like okay this idea has come to me and it's a wonderful thought and because he is not happy himself 
Why is the peddler not happy? Because yeah, the world has not been kind to him. He does not have enough food. He does not have a home. He does not have a family. He's wandering from place to place, begging and stealing to keep himself alive. So he says the world has been so bad with him. And now he's thinking bad of the world. Because what does he think the world to be? He thinks that the world is a rat trap, right? And yes, so he thinks happy, you know, like, of course, about the people who are they caught in the trap. So he says, if I'm not happy, others are also not. I'm out of the trap, even then I'm not happy. And people who are there inside the trap, they are also not happy, right? So yes, yeah, so he's thinking about the people here, people who have entered the trap, people who are going to, you know, like be tempted by all the goods and worldly possessions, monies and riches and buildings, all this. One dark evening, as he was trudging along the road, he caught sight of a little grey cottage by the roadside and he knocked on the door to ask shelter for the night. Nor was he refused. Instead of the sour faces which ordinarily met him, the owner, who was an old man without wife or child, was happy to get someone to talk to in his loneliness. Immediately, he put the porridge pot on the fire and gave him supper. Then he carved off such a big slice from his tobacco roll that it was enough both for the stranger's pipe and his spoon. Finally, he got out an old pack of cards and played molles with his guest until bedtime. So now one day as he was walking, did the peddler hear? Did the rat trap uh, maker or the peddler, did he have a permanent home? No. So he kept on wandering from one place to another. Whenever night would fall, if he was able to get shelter, well and good. Otherwise, maybe he slept out in the open only. Right? So in one day, as he was walking along the road, it was getting dark. He saw this little grey cottage by the roadside. And he knocked on the door. He wanted shelter for the night. And generally, what was the reaction? People did not allow him to enter. He was sent away. Maybe they would give him some food or something, but no, he was not allowed to spend the night over there. But to his surprise, what, who opened the door? There was an old man. He was lonely, right? He did not have wife or children. He was alone. And he wanted someone to talk. He's lonely, just like the peddler. He opened his door to him. He opened his house to him. And he also made him a hot meal. He put the porridge pot on the fire, gave him supper. And after supper, he also gave him tobacco, right? And then they started playing this game of cards, right? So, right. And uh, so the pet is very surprised that, see, wow, such a nice person. And he's been so generous with me. Otherwise, he has not been treated very kindly. Mm -hmm. The old man was just as generous with his confidences as with his porridge and tobacco. So he started, you know, talking about himself, about his secrets, about himself. The guest was informed at once that in his days of prosperity, his host, who's the host? This old man, right? He had been a crofter at Ramjo's Ironworks and had worked on the land. So he had worked on the land for these family, right, for this iron work. And now that he was no longer able to do day labor, he was old. It was his cow which supported him. Yes, that posse was extraordinary. She could give milk for the creamery every day. And last month, he had received all of 30 kroner in payment. So he's just telling about him that, see, yes, earlier I used to work for the ironworks, but now I'm quite old and I can't uh, work on the land. And uh, so now what does he do? He sells milk. And he's very happy, you know, that uh, he has a very extraordinary cow and he's able to earn money from that. And he's earned 30 kroners, which is for him a big amount. So now, yes, uh, the surprising things that have happened with the peddlers that he's got shelter. He's found a very nice host who's very, yes, who's very kind, who's very generous with the food, with the meals. And he's also talking to him because that old man was also lonely. He wanted company. 